Hi Krishna everyone. Hi Krishna. So we're out here in Russell Square. Yes. Doing another reading from the Glantaraj Sri Ma Bhagavatam. We're gonna to try to get it in before the heavens open and pour forth <laughs> the rain yeah. they're calling for to flood London. Yes. <clears throat> That's what it says on the weather app anyway. <laughs> So I think we might finish this chapter. It's just a couple of verses as long as some of us don't talk too much. <laughs> so it's Canto 3, Chapter 10, Text 18. Om, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya so harmonizing. <laughs> right, text 18. <laughs> All the above are natural creations by the external energy of the Lord. Now hear from me about the creations of Brahma who is an incarnation of the mode of passion and who, in the matter of creation, has a brain like that of the personality of Godhead. Text 19. The seventh creation is that of the immovable entities, which are of six kinds. The fruit trees without flowers, trees and plants which exist until the fruit is ripe, creepers, pipe, plants, creepers which have no support, and trees with flowers and fruits. So these are the immovable living entities. And then text 20, all the immovable trees and plants seek their subsistence upwards. They are almost unconscious but have feelings of pain within. They are manifested in variegatedness. They are almost unconscious, the trees and the plants. I guess in one sense you have to be because people like cut you down and they sit on you and trample on you. That has to, you have to be unbearable. So. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure that's why they're half unconscious. And because yeah. they're covered. Yeah, they're covered. Modes. It's, it's their, their, um, <coughs> yeah. It's a kind of punishment, isn't it, you know? Yes. I mean, this thing, to stand in one place for so many years, I mean, behind us we have a... Yeah, can you big. see it? You can't see how big it is on camera, but it's pretty wide. Yeah, but that don't... I mean, yeah, trees are like hundreds of years old, thousand. Not cool. Not cool. Well, yeah, so it's a long, long time to mm. endure life and things move in slow motion, you know? So, anyway, let's move on. We don't want to take birth as a tree. Well, we did once. Did we not? Not, we did. Text 21. The eighth creation is that of the lower species of life, and they are of different varieties, numbering 28. They are all extensively foolish and ignorant. Mm. <laughs> they know their desirables by smell, but are unable to remember anything within the heart. Mm. Pop -pop. In the Vedas, the symptoms of the lower animals are described as follows. <laughs> oh, I'll just read the translation. <laughs> lower animals have knowledge only of their hunger and thirst. They have no acquired knowledge, no vision. Their behavior exhibits no dependence on formalities. Extensively ignorant, they can know their desirables only by smell and by such intelligence only can they understand what is favorable and unfavorable. Their knowledge is concerned only with eating and sleeping. So that was the end of that translated quote and the Prabhupada says, therefore even the most ferocious lower animals such as tigers can be tamed simply by regularly supplying meals and accommodations for sleeping. Only snakes cannot be tamed by such an arrangement. <laughs> That's quite funny. 
Although there are the snake charmers, and especially in India, they play that. You know, Oh, yeah, but then somehow they're <coughs> hypnotizing. But the point that Prabhupada is making, like even you know, if you give an animal some food and shelter, it becomes your friend. So you, the snake don't care if you tuck it into bed or give yeah, it like a think, bald egg. Yeah, it's a little confusing. I would have thought that immovable trees and plants would be of a lower, lower level than than animals that depend primarily on smell but um anyways for some reason at first i thought he was talking about fish although fish don't really smell but they must have mm. some sense of understanding but anyway let's carry on and see 22 O purest vidura of the lower animals the cow the goat Buffalo, Krishna stag, <laughs> hog, gavaya animal, deer, lamb, and camel all have cloven hooves. Okay. So now we're getting into the cloven hoof thing, which is there, I think, in different shastras. Mine says all have two hooves. All have two hooves. So that's what clothing, clothing. means. Yeah. <laughs> it means like that, like you have. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Horse, mule, horse, mule, ass, gora, sadabba, bison, and wild cow all have only one hoof. Hmm. Yeah, so they have it's hmm. like all around like that. Um, it's cows. Is a wild cow. Yeah, cows. Cows have cloven hooves. Yeah. Now you may hear from me about the animals who have five nails. So like five fingers or toes. The dog, jackal, tiger, fox, cat, rabbit, sujaru or sajaru, mm. sujaru. Lion, monkey, elephant, tortoise, alligator, gosapa, etc. All have five nails in their claws. They are known as panchanakas. Naka means you know, like nails, I guess. It sounds like knuckles. Mm -hmm. Or animals having five nails. <coughs> so that gosapa is a snake with four legs, in what? case you were wondering. And a sajaru has thorns on it, all over its body. When do you see that? In the translation. Oh. <laughs> Go so sapa. It's a oh, well, snake that's a with snake four with legs. Four legs is a lizard, obviously. Oh, obviously. That's a Komodo dragon or something <laughs> like that. All right. <laughs> and then a sajaru. Thorns on the like a hedgehog maybe. With thorns on the body. Yeah, 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 yeah. Must be like a, well, a porcupine. All right, it never agrees with us. No, a hedgehog <laughs> is also there, that's for sure. Right. But uh, but por they use porcupine quills in certain ceremonies, so porcupines right. are uh, prominent there in India, of course. And a porcupine quill is uh, the instrument used by Vishnu to part the hair of uh, a deity. Like for Japhi, Vishnu to part the hair of a deity. Like that. Right. Okay. okay. <clears throat> 25. The heron, vulture, crane, hawk, basa, baluka, peacock, swan, sarasa, chakravaka, crow, owl, and others are the birds. Didn't really give much away. No, I've already had a look, don't mm -hmm. worry. And text 26. The creation of the human beings who are of one species only and who stock their eatables in the belly is the ninth in the rotation. In the human race, the mode of passion is very prominent. Ain't it true? Humans <laughs> are always busy in the midst of 
miserable life. But they think themselves happy in all respects. Purport. The human being is more passionate than the animals, and thus the sex life of the human being is more irregular. The animals have their due time for sexual intercourse, but the human being has no regular time for such activities. The human being is endowed with a higher advanced stage of consciousness for getting relief from the existence of material miseries. But, due to his ignorance, he thinks that his higher consciousness is meant for advancing the material comforts of life. Thus, his intelligence is misused, and the animal propensities, eating, sleeping, defending, and mating, instead of spiritual realization. By advancing in material comforts, the human being puts himself into a more miserable condition, but illusioned by the material energy, he always thinks himself happy, even while in the midst of misery. Such misery of human life is distinct from the natural comfortable life enjoyed even by the animals. Interesting. Such misery mm -hmm. of human life is distinct from the natural, comfortable life of human life. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot. Yeah. Um, humans are very passionate. Mm -hmm. um, by nature, they have the capacity for um, getting free from the distresses of animal life by utilizing their higher intelligence, but they unfortunately misuse it. Uh, to try to enjoy uh, simply animal propensities for eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Mm -hmm. And because of this, then they suffer miserable conditions, but because they're so illusioned, they think they're happy. Yeah. Misusing Me the intelligence. Mm. Meanwhile, mm. animals yeah. are... are um, Content in their own ignorance. Yeah. Text okay. 27. O oh good Vidura, these last three creations and the creation of demigods, the tenth creation, oh. are, are Vaikrita creations, which are different <coughs> from the previously described Prakrita natural creations. The appearance of the Kumaras is both. Text 28 and 29. The creation of the demigods is of eight varieties. Number one, the demigods. Number two, the forefathers. Number three, the asuras or demons. Number four, the gandavas and apsaras or angels. Number five, the yakshasis and rakshasis. Number six, the siddhas, charanas and vidyadaras. Number seven, the bhutas, pretas and pisachas. And eight, the superhuman beings celestial singers etc all are created by Brahma the creator of the universe the Popo, as explained in the second canto of Srimad Bhagavatam the Siddhas are inhabitants of Siddha Loka where the residents travel in space without vehicles at their mere will they can pass from one planet to another without difficulty therefore in the upper planets the inhabitants are far superior to the inhabitants of this planet in all matters of art, culture and science, since they possess brains superior to those of human beings. The spirits and jinn mentioned in this connection are also counted among the demigods because they are able to perform uncommon functions not possible for men. Mm. Yeah, I'm often, because there's 8,400,000 species of life and um, that verse from the Padma Purana mentions uh, aquatics, plants, um, amphibians, uh, reptiles, insects, mammals, and humans. 
And because it, and there's 400,000 species of humans, and demigods aren't mentioned, none of these, you know, personalities are really mentioned. So I've often, I always understood that demigods were humans, but just of a, the higher caliber or higher um, species uh, of, of human. But this seems to imply that that's not the case. Mm. Is that what you understand? Yeah. But we may find out more information later. Mm -hmm. And text 30, and this is the last verse, and will be the conclusion of our reading today. Now I shall describe the descendants of the Manus. The creator Brahma, as the incarnation of the passion mode of the personality of Godhead, creates the universal affairs with unfailing desires in every millennium by the force of the Lord's energy. <laughs> Purport. The cosmic manifestation is an expansion of one of the many energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Creator and the created are both emanations of the same Supreme Truth. As stated in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, Janmad Yasya Yataha. Thus in the Bhaktivedanta purports of the third canto, tenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Visions of the Creation. Mm. The um, next chapter which we'll start next time is called Calculation of Time from the Atom. Yeah, this is a very deep chapter. Right. These chapters I always want to spend hours studying. Oh, I thought you were going to say skip, but yeah. <laughs> That's a joke. All right. <laughs> See y'all later now. You See you later. Um, thank you very much. Please read the Srimad Bhagavatam. Yes. Please uh, study Srimad Bhagavatam. And if you would like a set of Srimad Bhagavatams, let us know and we'll make the arrangements. Yeah, How we know a man. We know a man who knows a man. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm Gloria Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hi, Krishna.